They will be made from a number of different parts of the IT kit. And we need to understand as IT which part of the infrastructure goes to support each of the services that we provide to our customer base. Barclay talked about the supply chain approach, and this is really what we're talking about here, is understanding and being able to map the dependencies between the services and the underlying IT infrastructure. This will also help us to understand the dependencies between different services as well, because services can actually provide support and dependencies for other services. So we need to understand the IT infrastructure and how they support services, and that will help us understand how other services fit into that too. And historically, again, IT, when looking at creating uh, configuration management databases, for example, have tended to work from the bottom up, started with the, the low-level IT infrastructure and then worked their way up to, to the services. What we're seeing now and what we're sort of recommending now is certainly looking at that the other way, starting at the top, starting with the services, and then from that, defining the components and the IT infrastructure you need to support to support those services. The other thing that this slide talks about is lifecycle service portfolio management, and here we've got to understand the service will have many states. It will go through a development stage, it will go into a, an operational stage, and it will go into a retirement stage. It doesn't just appear and disappear. It has different stages that must be managed uh, uh, by IT uh, and the business throughout each, each stage of that life cycle. Service value management, one of the things that IT, again, has been quite poor at is being able to identify to the business how much it costs to provide the services we provide to the business. And by identifying the infrastructure required to support the services, then we can start to identify the individual costs for the provision and the support of those services. Once we can do that, we can start to show to the business the value we present. The argument from the business is often it's much cheaper to buy a PC, for example, from a local store than it is to buy it from IT. Now, what IT need to be able to do is say, well, yes, that may be the case, but when you buy or you get a PC from us, you don't just get the PC, you get all the software installed, you get it installed at your desk, you get, you get the help desk support, you get the firewalls, the storage. There's a whole bundle here, a whole package that you get when you buy it from, from IT. That's why it costs more than buying it from a local store, because you get much more. So we're actually proving and demonstrating the value that we provide to the business. And again, we keep coming back to the same point. We keep coming back to this relationship that IT and the business have to establish if this is going to work because that helps us to understand what today's issues are, what we need to provide today, but also will help us to understand what we need to provide tomorrow as well. Okay, thanks. Well, we've now coming on to the second question, which is uh, quite a pertinent one, particularly about how you structure your own services. So do you actually structure your current services individually or in bundle packages? Uh, do you use templates? I think there's a question I've seen already that is asking about, um, you know, do, do we use a template or a, a structure? We, we will come on to that a little bit later. Um, or do you not distinguish between services and offerings or, or not have a service catalogue? Um, I think it's pretty clear from the results. 65, 66% don't have a service catalogue. So uh, our question is, uh, is interesting for some, but for many, it's, it's, it's one to look out for. I guess if you don't have a service catalog yet, then you're going to have to think about services and offerings. One other question I've seen, uh, will we answer questions during this session? Yes, we will, uh, a bit later on. Uh, but I'm going to hand back to Brian, and we'll move on to the next session, which is going to talk a little bit more about offerings in particular. Thank you, Barclay. Um, Yes, we've got a very short section here just looking at the difference between services and service offerings. And uh, when we talk about a service, we're really talking about um, a collection of IT components, that's configuration items, assets, and other services perhaps, that when, are, when they're combined together, provide the business with the functionality they need to, to actually operate. Um, whereas an offering will be a specific request logged against a service. So if the service, for example, was email, um, the, the service offering it might be request email or might be request distribution list or restore uh, mailbox, uh, an actual request against the parent service. 
Uh, with, as I said earlier, we've been working a lot with service and service offerings in the past year with Axios, and Assist actually offers a number of out-the-box templates, uh, service and service offering templates, that we've set up as a realistic example, we think, of what customers will want to use. And they can be used without amendment, if you wish, or could just be used as the starting point for the foundation of your own service catalog. The next slide then shows us or gives some examples of the types of information that we uh, can store in, in a product and how it might be displayed. We've got the example of the email service here with a high level business description, a summary of what the email service actually provides uh, to, to the user and then a detailed description which goes into some more uh, detail about when it's offered and, and what the, the customer needs to do um, in, in, terms of, in terms of maintenance. So that's the service itself. Then we look at the service offering, which is provide email. This burrows down is, is the actual request, which tells the customer or the user what to expect if they request this particular offering and gives some detail about um, the descriptions, the SLAs they might get, uh, and even prices and lead times. When can they expect to get this uh, delivered? Now, I think one of the important things to point out here is that because this is a business service catalog, the language is business facing. It is written in, a, in, in business language. It's a language they understand. We have to write the business service catalog in that language because that's our audience is going to be the business itself. Okay, so the third question now really is, is really how are you getting people involved? How are you getting customers involved in this catalog process? Um, are you using workshops, training, review meetings, or haven't you begun yet? Uh, this is probably one of the most fundamental parts of, of service level management. I think, I think what we're talking about today is a whole pile of stuff about processes and ways of doing things and tools and so on, but actually the most difficult thing is getting people involved, getting them engaged and on board, um, and getting them to participate because people will always find lots of different ways for uh, resisting and pushing back on this type of stuff for different reasons. The business don't like it because they think they're going to be given what IT wants to give them. Guys in IT are always a bit scared of this kind of stuff. So you've got to really get them on board um, and all the same kind of level playing field, understanding what it's about and how they can contribute to it uh, and add value to it. So let's move on and talk a little bit about that. Thanks again. Most of you still haven't actually started your SLA yet. Um, the highest proportion in the other area was people having regular review meetings, uh, which is great and, you know, we can spend a lot of time trying to set up SLAs. Um, maybe sometimes they might not even work that well, but if, if you are at least having regular review discussion um, forums, then you've got a you've got a good chance of uh, hopefully delivering what customers want. But this is uh, hopefully will get you much more granular um, alignment with your business. Okay. Okay. The next slide. The next. Um probably going to look at is how we involve IT in this and obviously our customers as well. It's very important that everybody buys into this because if it's going to work then everyone needs to, to feel engaged and be part of the actual process. So this slide really looks at the uh, service level management project and the, the first uh, set of uh, activities here will be performed by the facilitator or the project manager if you like and there's a number of different stages in here starting with planning, very important, uh, should always in any project of this uh, uh, importance plan well ahead to understand exactly what you want to do and how you're going to be doing it. Then the next thing that we certainly recommend is a form of workshops. Now we'll be talking about the service catalog strategy workshop uh, in the next slide, but really it's an, it's an opportunity to introduce the ideas and concepts of service level management to the organization and to start looking at what you're trying to do and potentially any barriers there might be to the implementation of service level management within your organization. There's a negotiation phase because we look at, here we're looking at um, negotiating potentially service level agreements between IT and the business. So we've got to have some level of negotiation there because normally the business will want everything for nothing uh, and that's just not possible. So we need to negotiate with them to show them what we can realistically deliver for the cost they want to pay. 
the facilitation part where we need to start getting people together and working and making sure the project's actually progressing. There's going to be uh, an amount of documentation as well that we need to produce in terms not just of project uh, logistics and project management, but in terms of the, the, the final collateral and deliverables that will be produced from this project, one of them being the service catalog. We need to build and document the service catalog. We need to set up reporting because we need to identify the management information reporting that's important to us and how we're going to be doing it and getting the information from. Set up review mechanisms, service level uh, management, service catalogs, service level agreements are all living things, are all living documents and processes. We don't just cast them in stone and forget about them. We need to review them to make sure they're still providing what the business wants uh, uh, in, the, in the appropriate time to the appropriate cost. So we need to review them on a regular basis and we need to set up those uh, review mechanisms, how we actually review that. We then need to think about planning the full implementation so that we can start thinking about how we're going to roll this out throughout the organization, the transition phase, if you like. And then once it's live and once it's out there, what sort of ongoing support do we need, not just for the services, but the overall service level management process itself. The next or the left-hand part of the slide then looks at the customers, our, our customers, our users, and illustrates the types of information that we're going to be looking for them to provide. So uh, the priority of the services, which services are key to them, what are their key people and key systems, key departments, or what are the key times and targets as well. What are, we talked about priority and criticality earlier, that's what we're talking about there. When do they need these services so we can understand when we need to provide them uh, uh, for the customers, how quickly do they need to be restored if there is an emergency or, or business continuity issue, when do they need them back. What support information uh, do they need? So how do they contact uh, people if uh, there, there is a problem with one of the services? And what reviews as well? Because they need to feed back into this review. We've talked the whole uh, presentation about the relationship between IT and the business. So we need to include them in these reviews and we need to make sure that they, they feed into to the whole review process. The other side then looks at what we as the IT service provider need to think about in terms of this project. So currently, what IT services do we provide? We need to identify that. We may already provide some. Um, we need to identify what those are. We need to start thinking about the identification of our infrastructure and networks applications so we can start to use these to map the dependencies to the appropriate services. What about the support from the service and help desk? Because that's an important part of the, the provision of services is the support of those services. What about procurement? Because again, we may have to buy new equipment or new kits to support these services. What is the procurement process and how does that fit into the service level management process? What about other projects? How do we manage projects? How, do the, the, how will a new project feed into new services so that we're going to be in a position to uh, accurately budget what things are going to be happening next year or the year after? What about the resourcing levels? How do we need to support these services? And what about third party contracts? What about our suppliers? Because our suppliers and the contracts we have with our suppliers are going to play a very important part in the support of the services we provide. And what level of services uh, can we provide as well? As talked earlier about the business wanting as much as they can get for as little as they can get, that's fine, that's what they do. But we need to go uh, be, and be realistic with the business to say, well, this is what it will cost. If you want that level of service, fine, we can provide it, but this is what it's going to cost you. Brian, just as a question, we've had a question coming in about our approach here, and it's 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 asking or saying we're taking a version two, ITO version two approach here, and how how would our guidance change for ITO version three? Um, I'm not sure that this is either a version two or a version three. It's it, it's a good focus, but I suppose one of the things in version three is that portfolio management and the multi-level. What, what do you see in, in, in this approach that gives us the, the different types of information and how that relates to what version 3 says about different types of levels of...